Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up Acolytes, five of them, for my Gene Sealer Cult's army. However, first we're actually going to go and magnetize them all because you can assemble them with flamethrowers, uh, explosives, melee weapons, or auto pistols, and the sergeant has a bunch of different things. So first we're going to start off with, well after assembly, which is just the main bodies or the chest cavities, we're going to mark where the halfway point is. Now, the two halves coming together, we got the vertical line, but now we need the horizontal line. I just go from one piece of the armor, the front part to the back, and then I create my X. I then take a razor blade with a nice handle, and I just make the first tiny little hole in the very center. Then uh, what I use is I use this uh, file. Uh, the tip is pretty nice, and I just spin it on there to increase the size of the hole. And once the hole is accurate and good enough, I use this... Uh, the Army Painter sells some uh, drill bits specifically for this. I used a, I, I don't know, was it like a three millimeter wide uh, drill bit for my three millimeter uh, magnets, and I just drill all the way through. And when I put glue inside of them and push the uh, magnets in, some of them worked well. The idea was to have a magnet deep in so much, and that uh, when the arms are stuffed, they would have a magnet on them because the model is so small. Uh, it's big enough to cover a magnet, but a magnet can't be inside their arms, so the magnet would be on it, and the magnet would go into the body, and in the body there would be a magnet. On paper, this works. To do it, I uh, made a few mistakes. Th three of the models, on their left side, the magnets got stuck inside because of glue, because it was poorly added in, and got two magnets stuck in there. Uh, the other ones, I figured I'll just put glue on one end and I will shove it in with a little razor blade or a plastic bit, the magnet, until it gets into the right spot, and once it hardens and adheres, I do the other side. That's how I should have done it. Do not stick in a, uh, tower of magnets in to the right depth because the glue will just spread out and you'll get stuck. So, uh... Uh, to fix this, uh, essentially I have these very thin magnetic sheets and basically I cut a piece off and I applied it onto the arms that would go onto the magnets that were just full instead of gaps. Now this magnetic sheeting is actually very weak. It's strong enough to hold and just that. A stiff breeze will knock it off. I mean, uh, that was an unfortunate setback and actually took me a few days of going through different methods to fix this. So. How to avoid this? Put the magnets in one at a time, just shove them in to where they need to go and apply glue after the fact. Easy. Alright, now for priming. We're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey Citadel color. Because uh, it's a good base layer for this, I'm going for a lighter colors and this grey as the darkest recesses is decent. It matches with all the colors I'm going to come afterwards. And here's a list of most of the colors I used. I accidentally put a few away before I got their picture. I don't know, I was just automatically doing it and then I realized I messed up. So here's most of the paints and materials I used for this project and some stuff that I didn't show on camera because they're just tedious things. Like, do you really care what color a single bottle they're holding is? Eh. And once that was done, I went straight into base coating. All right, we're gonna start with base coating with Pallid Witch Flesh. As a off-white, that's pretty decent. We will use an airbrush and we'll spray it from the top and 45 degrees up above down to create uh, the lights uh, and the base color will be a shadow. And then with Bold Titanium White and a good dry brush, we're gonna dry brush all over the bodies and arms and stuff to pick out all the details. I'm using the Artist Opus brushes. These are very good at getting all the right details. It's like night and day. These dry brushes are very good. And this is for, um, we're painting low quality spam troops essentially, and so this will pick out a lot of the details and will increase the quality of the base colors. And now for the actual colors with Dawnstone, Baharoth Blue, Evil Sun Scarlet, Pallid Witch Flesh, and I show it later, but Kalidor Sky is a darker blue, and Lamian Medium, we're gonna lay the first layer of colors. Now, uh, the dry brushing has picked out all the highlights and details, and now we're going to give color to everything. So basically, we're gonna create washes with all these different colors, with Lamian Medium, and you can add a little bit of water, a little bit, to make it flow better. 
but uh, essentially these are slightly thicker washes because I didn't want to do it multiple times so it's a relatively thick wash uh, you just add Lamy medium until you get the thickness or opacity that you want and so basically Dawnstone goes onto their guns and their armor plates everywhere Baharoth blue goes onto their pants Evil Sun Scarlet goes onto the three that have loincloths and stuff. Pallid Witch Flesh will go onto their flesh. And the Kalidor Sky will go onto their Gene Stealer Chitinous Armor. Chitin Armor, however you want to pronounce it. And with this, these are the base coats. And now for something a bit different. After painting more Torian, I realized that I could solve one of the problems of the super white highlights underneath if I added another like uh, wash onto them to darken it a little bit further before the oils. So with Coella Green Shade, Griff Griffhound Orange, and Magos Purple with Lamian Medium, we're going to add some depth into it. So Coella Green Shade with a bit of Lamian Medium to even it out is going to go onto their chitin armor stuff to add, uh, to turn their white that is on their arms and limbs, the highlights, into a different color. Uh, the Griff Hound Orange is going onto the red cloaks. This was a mistake. I should have gone with a deep red. Uh, it turned it from white to whitish orange. So this is about uh, color coding the highlights to match the body part instead of it just being white highlights underneath. Then with Magos Purple, I did this onto the hands and I've discovered something incredible. It works great. This is a great way to get the purple skin with good detail. I add in a little bit of Lamian medium to even it out, but this is near pure Magos purple because it's very thin and diluted. Just Magos purple in general, it just doesn't have good strong pigmentation. So it's very thin already. And now with Mornfang brown, I, with a bit of water, apply it on all their leather satchels. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and it's, you can see what I mean by very white highlights. The color is there, but it's also like a white highlight. White doesn't belong as a highlight for Morphing Brown. So then I go with Skeleton Horde Contrast right afterwards and uh, add a little bit of Lamy Medium to help even it out. And then I apply it all over and it uh, brings, it ties the highlight together with the base color. And it looks pretty decent. All right, now for the oils with basically black, deep blue, and red, but lamp black, ultramarine, French ultramarine, cadmium blue, and gamsol, which is just mineral spirits. It's just gamsol is the brand that I use or that I have. So essentially what happens is I'm gonna mix, uh, di uh, mix mineral spirits in until they come to a wash. Uh, and yeah, so the black is going to go onto the weapons and the gray armor. Use very little black because it's very pigmented, so better to start with almost nothing and then add more to get the color you want or the uh, depth or what is it opacity you like. Then with the blue, I applied it onto their legs and I mixed black in as well, just a little bit in there to darken it. I applied it to their legs and to their arms. Then the red, I applied it onto the guys who had uh, well uh, the cloaks and stuff or whatever those things are, loincloths, yeah. And uh, then once that was done, I took a makeup sponge, pretty clean, and just wiped everything away. And that was it. Now, also to point out, now because uh, here's a thing I don't show, but basically uh, how I store these models, because, you know, I basically throw in a bunch of washes and then put them down on the, on the painting table. Because of the way they are oils, uh, like the oils don't dry or cause any real trouble. They slowly dry as the uh, mineral spirits dissipate. And uh, this doesn't cause any problems uh, normally. So basically I just apply the oils and just put this stuff on their little t uh, all their guns and arms on the table. When they finally get dry and I just wipe them, they're good. So there's no real like storage problem. It's something that I don't show, but it, if you actually try to do this, you're gonna notice that you have no place to put down all the arms and guns without them touching a the table. It, it, it doesn't matter, it's good. And with Nuln Oil and a terrible picture, I don't know how I screwed that up, but Nuln Oil, uh, basically pure, goes on all their guns. 
essentially to add more depth and shadow to them. All right, now moving on to the faces. With Palette Witch Flesh, Mago's Purple, Lamian Medium, we are going to paint the faces. So, face layer, Palette Witch Flesh all over. So, what I do is I take Mago's Purple and a little bit, a very little Lamian Medium, just a little bit to affect the internal flow and consistency, and I just applied it on until it was solidly on there. But in fact, you can just ignore the Lamian Medium if, uh, as well it's like too much uh, there's a chance if you add a little bit too much lamian medium you'll just be wasting your time because of how thin mago's purple is so okay pure mago's purple <coughs> and once that's done what i did was uh to highlight i took palette witch flesh pure and then i mixed in some mago's purple into it and it gave it the right amount of depth so basically i had palette witch flesh mixed with mago's purple and i started highlighting and it went on super smooth a co uh, Citadel contrast paints are really being useful as just shade changers rather than actual just paints to apply all over. And basically what happened is I kept adding more palette witch flesh to change the ratio and making it lighter and lighter and then the highlights eventually got pretty good. And the paint went on so smooth uh, it looked really really nice. And I uh, just skip ahead and... <laughs> Uh, the details on the face masks, these are just simple colors you can choose. For me, it's just grays, uh, Eschen Gray, Dark Strap, Dawnstone, and then with a little bit of Null Oil to darken it. And then the, just the greens are there to just, uh, just a Caliban green, a uh, brighter green, and just mix some uh, Pallid Witch Flush in to create the very bright uh, part of their mask and stuff. These are just simple things, you don't have to focus on it, and their forehead armor chit and things. It's just the same stuff, Kalidor Sky, with a bit of a wash and then a highlight. It's just quick little things. It's just like, you don't really need me to make these small little, like, gear decisions, the colors and stuff. And also, um, it's really annoying to film this kind of stuff. It's like, it's much faster for me to just knock this out and just random stuff, because I'm just making up as I go along and I don't know how to organize it for filming. But basically, choose whatever colors you like. It's pretty simple. All right, with Dawnstone and Corvus Black, we're going to paint all the like straps and cloth that they have wrapped around their bodies and stuff. Basically Dawnstone and then a thin line of Corvus Black in between so it looks like a black wrap with gray highlights. It, it's so-so. There's the ones where they wrap it like repeatedly around their arms and stuff and it just doesn't look as good. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I should have gone with pure black because the colors kind of blend together a little too much because it's so small. And now with Corvus Black and Dawnstone, uh, again, in this order, we're going to paint their nails. So basically all their toenails, fingernails and stuff, base layer of Corvus Black. Then with Dawnstone, uh, so for their fingernails, just Dawnstone aligned in the center and on the tip. And for their big uh, nails that they have on their hands, uh, basically, uh, how do I describe it? It's like a triangle. Top right, if you're looking straight at the nail, their top right edge, top left edge, and bottom edge, you do, and then the tip of the nail, if that makes sense, like a triangle or of sorts on their big nails, their three fingered hands. All right, with Emperor's Children and Mago's Purple, I try to paint the things in between their arms and stuff, that pink stuff, and their wrists. Uh, this was a mistake. I should have gone with Pallid Witch Flesh. So basically, Emperor's Children in the middle, and then pure Mago's Purple on top. It somewhat worked in some areas, and some areas it didn't. But honestly, what I should have done is, from what I learned earlier, um, I should have done just uh, pure Pallid Witch Flesh, or maybe a Pallid Witch Flesh, Emperor's Flesh, uh, Emperor's Children uh, mix and then covered it with uh, Mago's Purple. They would have stood out more, but I'm going for simple cheap troops, so I'm not going to uh, f fret about it. All right, with Kalidor Sky, Baharoth Blue, Warp Sungle, and Padded Witch Flesh, I'm gonna paint their melee weapons. 
uh, essentially base layer of Kalidor Sky, and then I, a one way to blend together, like on a budget or on a time budget, is to take a dry brush and just tap, tap, tap everything and stifle it, and it seems to work. So, Baharoth Blue covered 90% of everything with that, or stifled it on, you can still see Kalidor Sky more towards the base of the weapons. Then, with Warp Stone Glow, I did the same thing again, covering about half of all the Baharoth Blue. And then I did a one-to-one-ish mix of Warp Stone Glow and Pallid Witch Flesh, and I just outlined the edges of the blade. Now, I don't show this here because I didn't like it fully. I went back later, and then with the same Warp Stone Glow and Pallid Witch Flesh, I basically painted uh, chips into all the edges of the blades. Basically, just a bunch of uh, vertical lines that go from the blade in. Very small, subtle ones, but it adds a little bit of texture that looks better. All right, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Luganeth Orange, and I don't show it, but I'll show it up later, Golem and Flesh and Lamin Medium. We're gonna paint the banner. I kinda wanted to try some stuff, and so basically, base layer, Mephiston Red, then painted Corn Red directly into the recesses and stuff. And then I wanted to use it as a wash, but it just wasn't dark enough. So I tried something different. I took Golem and Flesh with a little bit of Lamin Medium to even it out, so it doesn't marble. I basically painted the whole thing and, and it really darkened it far better than corn red. I guess it took it in sort of a purplish direction a little bit. And then what I did, I wanted to try something else. I wanted to like take the dry brush and tap 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 add texture to it. So I skipped the reds entirely and went straight to Troll Slayer Orange. And so it would be like a stark contrast from dark shadows to immediately the orange so it would stand out more instead of gradual layers. And it came out really well and I tried a little bit again with Luganeth Orange. And that turned out really well as well. And then I took Luganeth Orange and then I painted straight lines on the folds and edges to add some rigidity to it. And also paint the edges of the holes. And then when that was done, I then went back with the Golem and Flesh Lamia Medium Mix and I applied it directly into areas where there would be shadow. And it came out really, really, really well. Alright, with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I water it down a bit so it gets rid of the whitening, and then I applied a coat all over everything. And it still was a little bit glossy, underneath it was still a bit of shine because I did water it down, but it was the type of gloss that I liked. It's where I do that one-to-one -one mix of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish that works good but by doing one layer of this it seemed to have achieved that effect although probably by random i'm still going to do the one-to-one -one mixes because i can control that consistently better but yeah varnish applied and with armor painter anti-shine matte varnish i applied this on all their melee weapons because it says anti-shine it's matte varnish that's a lie this stuff is glossy Alright, with Vallejo Copper, Steel, and Dura Aluminum, and Nolan Oil, we're going to paint the metals. So basically the copper goes on random knickknacks, their Gene Steeler cult symbols on their waists, the, uh, I don't know what is it, the ammo for the fire, uh, their flame pistols, random uh, bits and pieces here and there on their guns to add character, flavor, texture, yeah. This is more of a random artsy thing. Put this stuff here and there. Uh, and then with <coughs> Vallejo Steel, this was the base layer of all metal parts. Um, yeah, the, it, the... I'm not good with metals. I don't know why I can't seem to do it right. So the guns are like a hybrid of some metal and not metal. So the metal is on like the very gun barrels, uh, the magazines, stuff like that. Random little pipes here and there the pipes that they have around their armor and stuff. Then I took Nolan Oil and applied it all over, again, <laughs> uh, even onto other parts of the guns and stuff to uh, add depth and shadow, more shadow. And then with Dura Aluminum, what I did was I took a dry brush and I just dry brushed it 
uh, on uh, some weapons, but then I just started stifling it and it actually looked good. So the dura aluminum uh, contrasted with the dark grays and the dark metal here and there, stifled on, added a lot of texture to the weapons and I really really liked it. They looked worn and torn a little bit more. Uh, I could probably add some coloration stuff to it here and there, but it looked fine. A little bit of dry brushing, but a lot of stifling. And now for assembly, which with these very magnetized models means just attaching their heads and bodies to the uh, bases. Um, one thing, I had to cut their neck parts much deeper because the magnets and stuff is much higher so they actually their heads cannot go into their bodies. So I had to uh, make sure there was a lot of space for their heads to go on. However, in some cases I cut a little bit too much and uh, some of them don't adhere as best as they could to the bodies, but yeah, it works in the end. And then I glue them onto uh, their bases, which I pre-made. But I forgot to <laughs> glue their magnets in until after I fully assembled everything. Now, let me show you a reality of something. So this is where I keep the entire Gene Star Colts army. It's a clear uh, box case thing. I took thick magnetic uh, strip and placed it on the wall there. So all their arms and armor is going to be hanging on there and their bodies will be uh well next to all the rest of the troops but their weapons and gear interchangeably will be up there now how i organize it is at the bottom of each base i had a color a bright distinguishedly different color than the others and then the magnet on which each magnetized armor piece will be will have the same color so that's how we'll be able to distinguish who has what weapon now there were problems because of the magnetic sheet that I used on their arms when the magnets got glued to their bodies to fix that problem. What happened is, is that that magnetic sheet is so thin that it can barely adhere to the thick magnetic sheet in the carrying box. So that is an irritating problem. And yeah, but apart from that, uh, they're organized by this color and their bases are Mornfang brown. So basically, uh, I can easily figure out who's who. And done. And by this time, I have magnetized their bases. I should have done that at the very beginning. All right, so looking at the models. Six out of 10, I am disappointed. Okay, so I'm unhappy with them only because of the magnetization problem. For playing as a game, it's gonna be very irritating uh, properly swapping them uh, to and from. A few other things, some of their arms and stuff don't fully go into their bodies because the hole where the magnet goes in the hole is exactly as big as the magnet and a bit of paint, maybe a bit of glue left over, seals it up a bit. So, <coughs> uh, let me talk about, okay, let me talk about the negatives and then I'm going to go into the positives. First, the negatives. What I would do, or what is bad? So, these are low quality troops. They're painted to a lower standard, despite having this really lovely shading and detail everywhere. Um, so the uh, red robes are of lower quality, they have don't, ha don't have any personalized stitching, their highlights are a bit weaker. Uh, I chose the wrong color, I should have chosen a dark red instead of griff horn orange to bring in line the white highlights the underneath the pre-painting with the color it was supposed to be. <laughs> um, the... Uh, what should I call it? Uh, actually most of my problems with this are just the construction, which is something I rarely do, so I'm actually not that good at it, so... How do you go? Um, yeah, my negatives are just that. It's mostly just the mag it is the magnetization. Everything else is just a first try experimentation. So experimenting, what would I do again? So to fix the magnet problem, I would drill the holes and I would widen them just a little bit bigger. Uh, uh, yeah, basically that, that's pretty much it. So that the hole, so the magnets could slide in, in and out easier. 
Uh, I don't know how I would do that and not ruin the space where the other magnets are supposed to be in, but yeah. I, so how I do it in is drill a hole in, move the magnet on one side at a time to the spot it needs to be, then flood it with glue where the head is. Once it's sealed in, then I'm fine with it. Then widen the hole just a little bit so that the next magnet can just easily slide in and out and it wouldn't be a problem. Easy, fix, done. I've learned that lesson. I will apply that next time. Next thing I've learned. So the uh, tying the uh, pre-coating highlights to the color it's supposed to be, that worked incredibly well. One of the problems I had with some of my original troops is when I would do the base coating and then I would apply the uh, the wash basically like their armors Dawnstone, but it's a Dawnstone wash and then I would apply oils to add the shadow <coughs> The highlights would still be almost pure white and it would really stand out compared to everything else The red would have white highlights the blue would have white highlights their hands would have white highlights. This was not Good it, it was lower quality. I couldn't figure it out But then basically applying a wash then applying a color changing wash to tie colors together then the oils for the true shadow and blending Because uh, the oils were able to add all the shading all the stuff all the deep dark recesses and the color transitions the light stuff the oils really bring it up, but the adding a a process between the first layer of washes and the oils really makes the colors and the highlights far better like they match what they're supposed to be a part of other thing I learned palette witch flesh magos purple makes perfect gene stealer pink <coughs> dang that was awesome also uh, applying the citadel uh, uh, washes, not said washes, contrast paints into a paint to change its color a bit was great for highlighting and for getting very smooth colors. I'm, I'm going to be using that. I need to get more contrast paints. I need to figure out which ones. I need some blues. I need some blues definitely. <coughs> um, next things. Um, their faces turned out really well for the amount of effort. Their weapons, very interestingly, they turned out pretty well. Uh. The using the stifling blending stuff turned out pretty good or well, when I went back and added all the scratches and stuff that turned out really well <laughs> Interesting thing I discovered the banner when I was doing it that go from that where I went to the very bright and Stipled it in and then added in straight lines that looks really good Quality is high on that and I'm gonna be experimenting that with my next model that I'll be painting a single model because I actually uh, At this point I have completely run out of gene stealer cult models I am two kits away from making it over the finish line of 2,000 points despite GW's best efforts <coughs> to screw me over. I was almost there and then those uh, balance passes basically took four to 500 points off my army and then I just keep getting screwed. <laughs> I just want to make it over the finish line, goodness. Um, but yeah, so uh, overall it's a 6 out of 10 simply because of the magnetization. It would be a 7 out of 10 uh, normally because I feel like some parts are not as good. I mean, th there's a lot that is good, but some things are not as good as they could be. And these guys are going to be irritating to physically play with and deal with because of the magnetization issues on some of them. Just random organization. I don't want to have to heavily organize how things work on them when I'm playing. All right, and that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed me rambling for a bit. Um, next model is just a model I had for a while, and I'm just gonna practice with it, play with it, flex on it. Uh, while I wait for my next order of Gene Stealer Cult stuff to come in, I am almost there. All right, so like the video, if you like the video, share if you wanna share, comment if you wanna comment, and more to come. Bye.